So I'm not going to um, run this again because we want our Kong to be a service that we implement. So I'll close all of this. We have our model. And so here I'll do a new file. I'll do counter main.go package main. And what we were trying to implement here is our counter. Now remember, we have this. We have font main. Okay, but we also have var API URL. We'll say where default value is maybe counter. Let's just say. And we're going to now be producing random numbers. So let's see, how do we do this? Well, first things first, let's try and get the value from the OS, get environment, or is that get env and API URL. And same as before. Now, in terms of creating um, values and sending it, it's very easy. We'll sit in a loop and do this forever. Post a count, right, to this URL. Again, I could pass this in here, the, our API URL, but it's global variable. So for now, I'm going to let it go. And then what we want to do is sleep for a little bit. So we should delay a little bit. How long should we delay? Well, when we were doing the command line, we didn't have much flexibility, so we were sleeping for just five seconds. So now, let's get a random number generator, and let's just say int number of time we want to sleep is something between every, you know, every five seconds or something. So we'll do milliseconds, 5,000 milliseconds. And so we'll vary between that. And so what we'll do is time that sleep, and time that seconds, well, milliseconds rather. So we'll do, D times time, so time that milliseconds times time that duration, and then cast this D value to it. Now, this random number generator, where are we getting it from? Well, let's just create a new random number generator. So var, a little bit of a mouthful up there. So all this is, is I'm creating a new random number generator but I want to initialize it with something. And so there's a source. So I create a new source and I base that off of the current time on my server. That's all that is. So it looks like a mouthful, but it's really, it's just that. No, this is in a loop and it's just doing that and I don't expect it to ever end. So the only thing I need to write now is my post function. So font, post, and this is what this looks like. So we said before that we're going to reuse the same structure we had from before. So let's do that. So I have counter and I have a model that the count and remember it had a counter value. So counter and I should initialize that to some random number. Again, I'm going to get that from my random number generator. I say a number between one, um, zero to 10,000, so e to the 4, right? And so you could write 10,000 however you want, but e to the 4 should work fine. And here I have to do this. Okay. So then I have a counter now. I have to send it. So I'm going to do JSON that Marshall, and I want to Marshall C. And of course, this is going to return the bytes. So if I do save, this is going to return the bytes and the error. So buff or bytes, whatever you want to call it, buff, buffer of stuff, and error. And I can check and see if I was able to encode this. If error not equals to nil, then bug rust that warn f unable to encode count or value, whatever you want, right? And then here I'll just return since I wasn't able to. Um, encode the value, okay? But if I was able to encode it, I don't know why that would fail, but if I was able to encode it, now I just need to post it to the server. So um, I'm going to say the way we're going to send it to the server is a as a body in a post request. And for that, what you can do is go to the HTTP package, dev, search for HTTP, and 
in the HTTP package to show you example for doing things like a post. And you can see here is a post with a form value. Here is a post that posts an image or JPEG and the buffer is this, the bytes, okay? And it's a IO reader buffer. So since it's an IO reader, well, why don't we just use a buffer? So we can say we have a, um, so let me do this. I'm gonna call, call this bytes B. I'm gonna say I have a buffer that's equals to bytes that new buffer. And new buffer, you can initialize it with a set of bytes. So I'm gonna initialize it with B. So those are the bytes that it already has in there and it's a pointer to new buffer. And so buffer is really cool because it implements IO reader and IO writer. So I can say HTTP that post and I can say the API URL is where I wanna post things to. I can say I wanna use application slash JSON and then I can say that's the body that I want to use. This bytes that buffer. And if I hover over this, if I save this and hover over it, you'll see that our body is just a IO reader. And so I can now check and see. So post returns a request and the error. I really don't care about the request. I just care about the error. So we already have uh, error value. So I'll need to create a new one. And then I can say if error not equals to nil, then I can say log ross, you know, that error. I can write out the error message, unable to post counter or post count, post count. And then I can print out the error. Now, since I failed to post it to the server, well, I just log it out at, on this microservice, right? Um, there's nothing else for me to do. It fails to send. Maybe the server is not there or something. So once again, I'll go to my counter. Um, let's see here. I'll go to zero two is what we're talking about here. And then I'll go to counter. And then I have main that go here. And so I'll use air again. And so if I run air, you can see that though it's actually posting. And we can see some of those values that are being posted, right? I'm not using HTTP IE anymore to post. I'm actually using our code. And notice how it posted two value before I did a get. That's because it's posting randomly. And so that's working. All right, so those were pretty easy to write. So you can imagine that the get is going to be pretty much just as easy as um, writing um, the, the, the post one. And so what we can do is essentially use the same bit of code and implement our polar. So for this, I'm going to copy main, or the contents of main rather, copy this, and I'm going to say new file, polar, that main, that go, and then I'll paste this here, and then let's go here, and I'll do control C, I'll cd into 26.02, and then polar, and then I'll do Air. And so this should be posting a value, but that's that's going to change pretty soon. And so let's close this. And right now I have two things doing post. So we don't want that. We still want to be random number of times trying to get a value. So let's just call this get count. So this is get count. And we're still using the API URL, like I said. And what we should do is have a, a new model in which we want to receive that count value. So there we go. And we should do this. And then we don't want to, um, we want to unmarshal something. But before we unmarshal it, we have to read it first. So the first thing we need to do, um, of course, we are sitting in loop doing the same thing. The first thing we have to do is get it. So we should do HTTP, that's get, and from our API URL. Now, if we look, we should see that oh, it returns the response and the error. So we definitely want the response. Let's call it RESP and error. Of course, if we have a problem, 
reading from the server or contacting the server, we should do unable to get count. That's what we should say. And then now that we have the response, well, we should try and read it. So for that, we're going to say JSON that new decoder and it remember it needs an IO reader. So we can say response that body and we're going to say do the decode and decode into C. Remember C is a pointer, right? Because we created a new pointer thing here. Now we could move this down here. So we're going to create it if we know that we can even read something from the server. And decode returns just one value, which is the error. So we can do that. And we don't need to create a new variable. And so we can then put this here. Actually, I don't think we need, yeah, we're not sending anything anywhere else. So there we go. Um, so if we unable to decode, decode count, yep, we fail to decode it. All right, so if we're actually able to decode it now, then we should, well, maybe this function, let's call it, let's this function return an int. And so we'll return C that counter. And if we can decode it, then it's just going to return zero. So we can return zero here. Or we can return an error message so it knows not to read it. All those things are possible. Um, actually, uh, yeah, let's return error and the value. So value and error. So it knows that oh, um, whether that value is the value we actually ran or it was an error. So nil. And so let's do here is an int, comma, error, yep, like this. And so here we can then do count, error, colon equals, and then if error not equals to nil, or rather if error is equals to nil, I don't care if it's not equals to nil. If error is equals to nil, then we can print it out, fmt that print f. And so there we go. But let's go here and see. So we're doing get calls, and then look, come from server is da da da. Of course, we don't see what is being sent to the server, but if we wanted to, we can easily change that by going back to our polar, our um, counter here, and then it, before it writes a value, when it creates a count, it writes it out on the screen. And so we can say something like FMT or log rust, rust that info f posted, you know, posted count value percent v new line and see that counter. Okay, that's what we sent. So if we did that, now we can see which value is posted to the server, and then we can verify that that's the value we're getting on the polar. So this is a bit long, but again, I tend to go through things slowly. I talk quite a bit. I show you some tips. Um, so hopefully um, you enjoy this. And if you did write it, um, how far off were you? You can let me know in the comments. If you did something different than what I did, which you most likely did, so I don't think anybody did exactly what I did, Tell me which database you use, which HTTP server you use, if you use any, or package. If you use the standard one, you use something like I did, HTTP route, or there are many out there. Um, i really like to know, get some feedback on how close you got to solving the problem. If um, you use the Redis, if you use uh, SQL database, you use MongoDB, did you use the standard HTTP package, did you use something else, just let me know. Give me a comment, give me some feedback. Um, let me know what you think of this. Yes, it was a bit long, but hopefully you learned quite a bit. Um, not only did you see how to write a simple service, but you saw um, some new packages, hopefully, and also how to use Redis, which really, you know, it's like a nice thing that you could pick up on the site, how simple Redis is to use. 
Now, now that I've finished all of this, um, thanks for your patience. Take care. If you haven't subscribed by the end of this video, uh, why not? Let me know. Let me know why you watched this video and you didn't subscribe. This pretty long video. Why you watched all the way to the end and still didn't subscribe? If it's too long, well, that's fine. You can say that too. That's probably something that's not going to change just because that's the way I tend my format. I gen generally talk a lot and go through things pretty slowly to make sure people understand it. Um, see you in the next video.